got plans for the weekend for the for the holiday. Uh, I, I didn't have me plan to sleep in and just all right. I watch old or uh, war movies from the from the book of uh, the book of Joshua. Um, Joshua Joshua was Moses' successor. Now, succession training is a big part of success. There can be no success without succession training. And the worst thing you could ever do is get in a stalemate where you just no longer aspire to go forward. When the people um, in, 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 there is, um, uh, I can't think of, I, I may have it wrong, but there's a book uh, a few years ago. It was, I think it was The Anatomy of a Dead Church. I think that's the name of it, uh, something to that effect. And it talks about the three phases there may be more of a church in the beginning. It's the exciting startup where everybody's excited. And then that's the leveling off where you kind of find you. And then that's the decline. And many denominational churches are experiencing great decline. And, then, and they did a study to find out, well, what do we need to do? Well, one thing that causes decay and decline is when people become complacent and parasitical. People become complacent. They no longer wish. They no longer dream. They no, they no longer get excited. You know, one thing you know about there's life in it is that growth. You know, um, Shannon loved to talk about um, her garden and she loved growing things. And the, the the beauty of life is growth. You know, and when you, when you, I know everybody, her kids and her husband probably tired of her talking about it. But when you see things sprout and grow and she'll say it to me, uh, about it. And I said, well, I grew up, we had hundreds of squash plants. She talks about one, you know, we had hundreds of corn stalks. I mean, we had corn field that was larger than this parking lot. So, uh, so I, when she talks about one, I was like, I, uh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, but it's great to see things spring and grow. It just a sign of life, wherever there's growth, there's life. And so, uh, we, we get excited when we see growth in anything. Well, every believer ought to commission themselves and assign themselves. I want the kingdom of God to grow through my hand. Now, I think one thing no one should ever be excited about, if you are one of those people, Jesus said, he that does not gather, scatter. And unfortunately, every church goes through that through periods of time. And that's a part of it is that you from time to time will have, uh, you will have to deal with, with the negative aspect of, of that, but you, it's not how you deal with it. It's how you deal after it. What's your, what's your plan? You know, um, I was watching on, and, and, and as I said earlier, as the, um, um, the people like, uh, Cliff, I will call you shortly, Cliff and Quisha and Jordan are headed down to university of driving. So we pray for their safe journey. And we're praying for others who are traveling today and to uh, those in Atlanta and those in, in Tuscaloosa and in Talladega. Shannon, you can go to Talladega. I wanted you to go with me. Uh, there's plenty of growth there. And you'll see enough. Uh, but I'm excited to see that she's never shown an interest in growing things. And now I see that. I'm, oh, that's interesting. But uh, uh if you want something to change in your life, just do one thing different, break up their monotonous, break it up. You know, there was a dog that was hanging around in my neighborhood and I'm pretty sure he didn't have a home like a stray and everybody would shoo him off, shoo him off. And the dog looked like he was just skin and bones. And I watched my grandson we was in the grocery store and I watched what he put in the bag and he put a bag of dog food in it. And I'm looking like I didn't notice. I act like I didn't notice. So we pay for the stuff and I'm thinking, interesting. We get home and he gets a bowl and put it to the side and put some water in it. And then he puts some food in the next one. And he goes in, he didn't say anything. And a couple of days later, I see him do the same thing over again, several days. Finally, one day I saw him sitting on the step and the dog was there right up on him. He had befriended the dog. 
fed the dog. And the other day I noticed the dog has gotten real fat. <laughs> and so he brought the dog back and the dog responded to him because people have been cruel. The dog would stay away, shy away from people. But through his efforts and his kindness, now he's made a friend. Now this dog don't belong to him, don't belong to anyone really. But I noticed uh, that he he nurtured the dog and befriended him. Now, the lesson there is we should, the Bible says he that show himself friendly, he that desire a friend must show himself friendly. Sometimes people have the mandate all backwards. They don't understand, you know, uh, what they should do in every situation. The moment you realize what you're up against, you can do something about it. You know, I see people trying to do things and they just don't understand what they need to do or how to do it. Sometimes it's very important that you know how to get out of a situation or how to make it work better. Now, I'm talking about um, Joshua as Moses' successor. God did wonderful works through the hands of Moses. Moses is one of the two people in the Bible that God testified about. God testified that Moses was the meekest man in all the earth. And then the sex, so his successor, Joshua, God told Joshua, as I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. Only be thou God with, for the people. You know, being a leader is a hard thing to do because you got to put the people first, put the people first. And, uh, and then I think one of the frustrations of being a leader over people is the people around you sometimes think you put the people over them. Well, you're not, but you have to take it serious. No leader can ever be successful if you don't take what God has ordained him to do serious. Now, God gave Joshua a task to move the children of Israel. Now, unlike Moses, who led them for 40 years, Moses led them longer and had a, a more stringent task with more people. And Moses had all types of people. He had to disgruntle because God told him, let get all of my people out of Pharaoh. And when he said all of them, that meant the, the unbelievers, the unhappy, the sinful one, the wicked one. But Joshua, Joshua was a little different. Joshua was, let him know I'm not Moses. <laughs> and he learned from Moses. And the first thing he did is he test his own house. And I did a history of historical uh, background check. Ms. Eleanor found that his sons was grown. And he got a sword and asked them, now, are you with me or against me? Said, we with you. And I trust me, that's the best time. Anytime you in a situation like that, I'm with you. And when he met with the council of leaders, he told them, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And when he said that, he let them know, now, whatever y'all choose to do. When the angel of the Lord came, Joshua asked the angel, now, he had a sword drawn. Now, whose side you on? Now, he's, he's a bad man that he was ready to take the angel on. If you if you may be an angel, but you ain't for God. And you're going to have to scat. Sometimes we, we let, you know, don't ever let a position override. Right. But he's a preacher. Yeah, but he's wicked. Or he ain't saved or whatever. Because, you know, people can have a title. Titles don't make you. In fact, you can make a title. You can stand in a garage all day long and call yourself a car, but it don't give you wheels. I know a lot of folks say they're rich and they broke. I know people holler, I'm highly favored. Is that favor? I don't want it. You know, I'm blessed and highly favored. No, how about this? Cursed and highly broke. Which, you know, people say a lot of things. You ought to live like your favorite, walk like your favorite, talk like your favorite, and you ought to celebrate like your favorite. Now, there's one thing that is contagious. Success is contagious. Whenever you 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 are anointed with success, people see it and they want to emulate it. One thing about successful people is they live life on purpose. You don't stumble into success. You got to aim for it, pursue it. You got to sacrifice to get it. Now, Joshua, after he had conditioned the children of Israel, now remember now, he wasn't just interested in volume or numbers, but he was interested in attitude. You do more with a few people with a good attitude than a whole lot of folks that are working against you. A house divided can't stand. You do better with a few righteous people than with a whole lot of folk that ain't trying to go nowhere. You know, it's hard 
when you want to push this one and pull that one, you'll wear yourself out just trying to get folks in a position to go somewhere. But when everybody got a mind to go forward, uh, God told Moses, speak to the children that they go forward. Just speak to them. Well, Joshua was a different kind of leader. He was Moses' successor, but he learned from Moses' mistakes. You ought to learn from the, your predecessor mistakes. Don't fall for the same thing that made them fall. You know, don't Moses almost lost out with God because the people vexed him. And to the point that, you know, don't let folk vex you and get under your skin. Folks will get under your skin and then they'll go get with, get with somebody else and act like it's your fault. And, you know, character is not what you say to me, but what you say about me when I'm not there. See, the true test of my character is not what I, I can tell everybody. James is a good guy. James is a good guy. Then James walk off. You know he ain't no good. Well, that's not a testament to James. That's a testament to the weakness and flaws in my character. You don't even have to guess what I say or what I do in your absence determines my character. And, and you know what? It says bad character corrupt uh, good communication. All right, now, so in the book of Joshua, uh, I'm going to jump forward for time's sake to uh, the book of Joshua chapter, where I want to start, I think I want to do chapter four. Um, uh, well, I'm going to start at chapter three, verse 12 first, and then I'm going to chapter four. Now, therefore, take you 12 men out of the tribe of Israel, out of every tribe, a man. Now, that, that's, that's his order. Now, well, we couldn't find one of Dan, so we got two from Reuben. You ever notice sometimes people change the rules, but they still want good results. The, the secret is follow the rules as it's given. You know, I'm amazed at people who always talk about revelation and spiritual awakening, but they don't follow the rules. You can't change the rule because you don't like it. He said one man from every tribe, there are 12 tribes. And when you get there, now let's go to chapter four. Chapter four says this, and it came to pass when all the people were, were clean, passed over Jordan, that the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, take you 12 men out of the people, out of the tribe of men, and command ye them, saying, take ye hence out of the midst of the Jordan, out of, out of the place where the priest's feet stood, firm, 12 stone. Now, first of all, God told Moses, prepare the people to cross the Jordan. You got to prepare folk for a journey. You ever notice sometimes, you ever see people go somewhere and don't pack? And then they get on the road and say, ah, I forgot, I need this. No, no, you prepare for the journey. Now, God told Moses, sanctify the people for tomorrow, we, we will move. Well, he told Joshua the same thing, but he said, make the people clean. Why? Melvin, because some of the people had issues. Some of the people had sins. Some of the people had problems. You got to get folk ready to receive their blessing. You're not ready because you think you're ready. You're not ready because, see, our heart will deceive us. The Bible said there is a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end thereof is destruction. That's why God give us direction in leadership. You got to know that what you think it may not be the truth. What you believe may not be the way it is. So God will give somebody some. That's why God give you a leader. God said, have you seen the ant? The ant don't have a leader. Have you seen the locusts? They don't have a priest. In other words, insects don't need a leader, but you are God's people. So God placed you under leadership. Now, what God was saying to them, he said, now, when you uh, cross the Jordan. Now, God did not tell the children of Israel when they crossed Egypt, when they crossed the Red Sea, y'all in the midst of the Red Sea, pick up a stone. God told them, get clean to the other side and I'll get you to the promised land. Now, God's given a different instruction because it's a different. You, you got to understand something. Just because yesterday it did, it worked, don't mean it's going to work today. God is alive and he still constantly give new direction. So the direction God gave the children, real, so they, they could have said, well, you know, that ain't how we did it with Moses. If you want to see a miracle in God's eye, you want to see something you've never seen before, just follow closely. Let me tell you something. You want to fix your house, bless your children. Many people don't understand the mess that their children are in is because they allowed their children not to fully embrace the covenant of God. They teach them how to read. They teach them how to write, but they don't teach them how to pray. 
They teach their children how to know who the president is. They teach them to know who Congress and the senators are, but they don't know who Jesus is. You need to make a priority of introducing your children to the Lord. Remember thou thy creator in the days of thy youth. The more your child know about God, the healthier your child would be. You got children now having psychotic episodes and they, they wondering and, and, and getting into uh, bad situations mentally and emotionally because they don't have the comfort of knowing that Jesus is the way. If there ever was one thing you need to do more than anything else is introduce your children to the Savior. If you need him, they need him. And despite popular belief, your children are not facing a baby devil. The same devil you face, your children are facing. But it's hard for you to teach others to take God serious when you don't take him serious. At church, you're all religious and you're all about God, but when you get home, he ain't nowhere near it. When you at home, you live a lifestyle that wouldn't reflect Christian uh, belief at all. You got to live it at home, on the job. Everywhere you go, let your light shine. In your conversation, in your business dealing, let your light shine. Everywhere you go, somebody ought to know you saved. If nobody on the job know you saved, then you are not letting your light shine. If nobody in your community know that you saved, you ought to let your light shine. They know what school you went to because you wear the colors. They know which football team you pull for because you wear the jersey. But they don't know which savior you're calling on. There's no other name under heaven whereby men must be saved but at the name of Jesus. You ought to let folks know everywhere I'm on Jesus' team. I'm for Jesus 24-7. And when you do that, somebody going to want Jesus. Jesus declared, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. The problem is we're not lifting. We're not lifting Jesus. We'll lift up our job. We'll lift up our family. We'll lift up our pedigree. You know, my whole family. I'm so sick of folks. We got Indian in our blood. You need, you need to be washed in the blood. I don't hear nobody. You know, sometimes people talk like being black is a curse. We want to be associated with everything else. I got Irish in my blood. I got Indian in my blood. We got white in our blood. Well, do you have Jesus in the blood? I don't, I, don't, I don't read history a long time, and I don't remember this great love fest between African-American Indians where they went on a date. And every time I read about Thomas Jefferson and Sally Hammond, I'm, they said that was his mystery. That was not. You don't own a mystery. That was his slave. And, and she was 14, and he was old, almost 50. So that was a pedophilia situation. But when history bleak at what they like, excuse what they want, we got to tell the truth. You know, let me tell you something. If you, you know, you can't. We got to stop making excuses and sugarcoating things that are not right. If it's bad, it's bad everywhere. Sound like Thomas Jefferson was worse than P. Diddy. All right. All right. All right. All right. They found over 1,600 bones under Benjamin Franklin's home. Stop raising folks up to a level of deity. These are human beings with faults and failure. There's no other name under heaven whereby me and must be saved. But at the name of Jesus, uh, when we lift Jesus up, that's the only person we should be lifted up, Jesus. So Joshua told the people, he said, now when you get in the middle of the Jordan, you know, right now, somebody asked me what the church need more. I said they need more good teaching. Now, you need preaching because how can they hear without a preacher? You need preaching because let me tell you, teaching, teaching give us information, but preaching give us inspiration. And it takes inspiration across the Dead Sea. It takes inspiration to walk into the Jordan. It takes inspiration to walk on water. It takes inspiration to go into the wilderness. You need a preacher. And now the uh, society has turned against preachers and everybody talk about the negative side of preaching, but everybody hadn't turned their back on God. Everybody hadn't gone away. Everybody hadn't sold out. Somebody's still standing. Everybody hadn't, hadn't gone over and drinking from the cup of Baal. There are still people that love God. There are still people that think that holiness is the way. Listen, we got to go back and do it the way God said do it. Now, you may not be right, but if you say you're not right, you're confessing. 
You say, I'm not right, you're judging. Well, if you say, ain't nobody right, you're lying. Somebody love Jesus. The Bible says every man got to give an account of his deed. Tell on yourself. Yeah, we got to go back. Jesus, so Jesus is the only way. Uh, let me get back to Joshua. Joshua told the 12 priests. Priests are held in high esteem, and whenever you're lifted up as elders, you got accountability. God never give you responsibility without accountability. And the more accountability you got, the more responsibility God can give you. The Bible says of Jesus himself, though he thought it not robbery to be equal with God, he humbled himself and became obedient. No, 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 no. Listen to this. There, there's a revelation that people uh, get. You know, you don't make yourself big when you got a sneaky, low down, backstabbing attitude. You with folk when you're with them, but as soon as they walk off, you try to kill them. But it, it ain't going to be long for everybody to see your, the, the results of your deeds. When everything around you is dying, you're the poison. Uh, so Joshua told the people, when you get in the midst of the Jordan, he said, let the priest now bear the Ark of the Covenant and let them bear it up because the Ark represents the presence of God. He said, now put it up over your head. You should always have the anointing over your head, lifted up over you. If it's over your knowledge, over your wisdom, and over your strength, it should always be above you. See, we're getting above it. That's why God took the ark from David because they had the ark carrying it waist side. You don't ever let the anointing be where everything else is. Always carry it above everything else. When they got in the midst of it, when they got in the midst of the Jordan, he told the priest, now y'all don't get within 300 cubits of it. Stop right there. Then he told the 12 representatives from the 12 tribes, the elders, get a stone. Each one of you get a stone. If they couldn't have one, said, look, get one for me. I'm going to stay over here. Get one for me. You got to follow to follow. And when they got to the other side, he said, one day, your children shall ask you, what do the stones mean? Someday, somebody going to ask you, what do the stones mean? If you can't remember the day, you can't remember the hour that God saved you. If you don't remember the day that God filled you with his spirit. If you can't remember how God delivered you. There's no memorial to God's deliverance. If you don't know how God saved you. Maybe you didn't get saved. If you don't remember how God brought you over. Maybe you're not over. So he said, when your children, 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 should ask you, what do the stones mean? Tell them this is how God delivered us. You know what? We overcome by the words of our testimony. You got to tell somebody God did a miracle. Tell somebody God did a wonder. Tell somebody everything going to work out fine. I got a plan and God's got a purpose and we're going to make it to the other side. And Joshua brought them over. The Bible says safely. Sometimes you got to get small to get big. Sometimes you got to lose to gain. Sometimes you got to release to gather. I hear you, Jared. Sometimes we're holding on to what we should be turning loose. Gideon, uh, he had the prestigious power to boast of 30,000 men. And it would have been a comparable fight. Uh, God said 30,000 is way too many. And he gave him an mandate and he let some of them go home. He got down to 3,000. And he asked God, how about now? God said, you still got too many. God said, I'm going to give you a plan. And there should always be a reckoning plan. There should always be a sanctifying plan. 
There shall always be a separation. Go down and watch them when they drink their water. Every man that lap like a dog, let him go home. Every man that sticks his head in the water, let him go home. But the ones who cup their hands and drink it like a warrior, he's watching as he drink. Use him. Isn't it amazing? There were more unprepared than there were prepared. I got some news. Even today, there are more unprepared than there are prepared. You got few men standing on their watch, standing on their square, sea line level. You got more men in the dark, stumbling in the day like it's midnight because they are not watching. Watch ye therefore, watch and see. And those 300 men gave Israel the victory when you got and everybody took part in the victory, even those that lap like a dog. When you take dead weight, you're taking unnecessary trouble. You're taking unnecessary burden. Check your camp. Joshua walked through the camp when he lost his battle. Y'all ain't with me now. I know some of you gonna say, why is Pastor bouncing everywhere? I'm saying, don't forget to remember how did you get blessed? How did you got how did you get healed? How did you get up? Don't forget to remember when you were down, what got you up? When you were in, what brought you out? Forget to remember. Joshua had a council meeting because he lost his first battle. He said, I ain't never lost. And I'm not a loser. What did we do different? Something happened that hadn't happened before. He said, we should not have lost. We had a better team. We had better training. And we had God on the side. And the priest told him, no, God didn't show up today. He said, why didn't God show up? He said, because somebody in your camp, they ain't like us. They not like us. They not like us. They not like us. He didn't say, Derek, go check. He didn't say, Melvin, go check. He didn't say, James, go check. He said, let's go look in every man's camp. And Derek said, look at my camp. He said, you good. Look in Melvin's camp. You good. Look in James' camp. You good. Somebody! And they got to Aiken. And Aiken said, what y'all doing? Why y'all here? And Joshua said, let's look. And they looked and saw a hump. They pulled back the rug. And Joshua looked at him and said, did you not know? Did you not see? Did you forget? God brought us over when we was in Egypt. God delivered us when we was in the wilderness. Why? You don't have to lie or steal. God is our provider. You tell me why Aiken was making his plea. He said, now James, grab him. Melvin, grab his family. Derek, grab all his goods. Burn his camp. Kill his family. And throw him off a cliff and stone it. 
And the Bible said to this day, it's called Aiken's place because of his greed. His whole family died because of his lie. The whole family suffered. When you lie, people die. When you lie, you hurt many innocent folk. When you lie, you lose the battle. Why we lose? There's an acre in the camp. Why? Somebody asked the question one time. We need to ask one of the members. There's an acre in the camp. There's an acre in the camp. All right. All right. But I know that you know that I know that I know God got our back. Sanctify the people. Well, tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're going into Jerusalem. Look at somebody and say, I'm about to receive my blessing. I'm going to sanctify myself. Listen, let me tell you what you do. You dedicate your house. Make your house an oasis. Make your home a sanctuary. Is God in your house? If I walk in your house, what do I see? Is your house dedicated to God? Is it an oasis of praise? A pill of healing? If I go in your house, is it like everybody else's house? I know I'm in a believer's house, a refining house, a sanctifying house, a holy house. You're, this is a holy place. Take off your shoes. Oh, y'all don't hear nobody. I've been with old folks in the old days. And Miss Eleanor, Sister Mary, the mailman, would go on some of those old saints porches and say, something about this house. Or the, the, the insurance man used to travel around. And Miss Martha, he'll come and sit down in some of the old saints' house. And he said, I can feel the presence of God in this house. And I've seen people that was working in the community. I said, Miss Sally, Mother Mary, Sister Johnson, will you pray for me? And those mothers will be washing dishes or hanging clothes. And they'll stop and pray for the mailman. They'll pray for the postman. They'll pray for the, the, the electrician. Pray for the insurance man. Because everybody knew that this house was dedicated to God. And I've heard people say, I can just feel something different. Now, if they didn't know God, they said there's something about this house. But if they know God, they said the presence of the Lord is here. If I come to your house, I see HBO, BET, Netflix, but I don't feel Jesus. I see Grey Goose and Hennessy. All right. Jack Daniels and Samuel Adams, but I don't see Jesus. I see loud. I see purple haze. I see Acapulco. But I don't see Jesus. You need to let folks know Jesus live here. Let your light so shine that men may see. Mm. That's why I, I don't have room for folk who want to get up and brag about other stuff. I don't want to hear nothing about your job. I don't want to hear nothing about your friends. I don't want to hear nothing about your education. All I want to hear about is Jesus. I think it's a, listen, if I was at school, I can't talk about Jesus. So since we're at church, let's talk about, let's not talk about school. Sometimes we have a fruitless conversation about nothing in the house of the Lord. Every moment we're in the house should be dedicated to God. Don't praise nobody but Jesus. We're praising everybody else. And that means we're not firemen. That is God. The hand of the king is in the, the heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord. Don't praise the king. Praise God. We're in the right place, but we got the wrong conversation. You know what? People want to see a miracle, but they ain't having a miracle conversation. 
People want a miracle, but they ain't having a miracle situation. You got to have a, mir a miracle continence. You got to have a miracle conversation. You got to have a miracle disposition. When you want what you never had, you got to do what you never done. People want it all, but they don't want to do it all. You, you know, you say, well, I want my children healed. I want my parents to live a good, fruitful life. But you can't run with the chickens in the daytime and soar with the eagles at night. Come out from among them. Separate yourself. You got to get talked about a little bit. Let folks say they say. Let folks talk about you. Say, you know, she say. I got a friend. He said he was started looking for a wife. He said he thought about all the people he knew. And he remember one young lady used to always tell him, no, no, we can't go nowhere because we unequally yoked. Now listen to this. She distinguished herself. Now a lot of folks, oh yeah, I'll go out with you. And when he got ready to find a wife, he went back to her and she said, I hadn't seen you in a while. What'd you call me? He said, I came back to tell you I done got myself together. And I would like for you to be my wife. And she said, well, let me check and see and pray about it and watch you. See, some of us have been, hallelujah, thank you, praise the Lord. No, let me tell y'all something. You represent the Lord, your God's ambassador. Me be more discriminating. Light have no fellowship with darkness. Stop accepting everything the devil bring to your doorstep. You are not to look like the devil, walk like the devil, talk like the devil. You can't go up the street skipping and hopping, holding hands with the devil in the Lord. The Bible says a man going to love one and hate the other. Come out from among them. We right in the midst of them. Come out and separate yourself. God ain't going to separate you. I promise you God's not going to come down from heaven and knock a blunt out your mouth. You're going to smoke on, my friend. God's not going to chase you down to see if you at the grasshopper bar. Go on, my friend. But when you need power, it won't show up. You don't have to guess, is there power in the house? Miss Martha, you know power is in the house because you see the light on. Folks know you got power in your house because I see your light on. You've been disconnected. You ain't got no power. You talking, there ain't no power. Well, it said a letter killeth, but the spirit make alive. Yeah, you know, I see folk quoting scriptures and I don't feel nothing. You know, the Lord say, yeah, but put some power with it. When you got power, you know, that's why you need some power. I see folk now, if God is a healer, get healed. I see folks that, well, you know, I don't feel good. I don't feel good either, but I trust God. It's not based on how I feel, it's based on what he say. And any time you can lay down and die. But when you refuse to die, say, Lord, I will live and declare the works of the Lord. He give you healing. He give you deliverance. He give you salvation. He give you sanctification. He give you deliverance. Power. Power to love. Oh, praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. I pray, Father, I pray now that those who are listening and someone on the sound of my voice, Lord, that you give them definitive reclamation that they receive your word with gladness and you bring healing and deliverance according to your mighty hand. Move as never before. Lord, that home that's broken, heal that family. That husband that's gone astray, Lord, bring him back to the sheepfold of his wife and children need him. That wife that's lost hope, touch her heart, give her another chance. Those children, Lord, Lord, who are victims that are victimizing, touch their heart, give them a mind to surrender to you now by faith. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. For we walk by faith, not by sight. There's healing in the room right now. 
There's healing in the room right now. On this Memorial Day, don't forget to remember. As we make our plans, don't forget to remember. Listen, this coming Wednesday, we're going to have Wednesday night praise. Please come. Listen, come. Let's have a celebration. Bring your shouting shoes. Let's just have a good, uh, shouting good time. You know, we're going to have church like we used to and church that we are used to. The praise, the, the singing going to be on point. It's just going to be an awesome time in the Lord. Listen to me. It's going to be an awesome celebration of God. Amen? Amen. All right. Now, listen, I've got many texts today. Well, I got four texts today that that uh, for those of you that are listening that you can't do cash app, go to Tithely if you can. If not, hold on. We're working on it because you know what? Bad enough, you know, that giving is is down to an all time low. But now folk can't give through the portals of, of uh, cyber. So we need your help. So uh, bear with us. Don't don't just say, well, this, this is a blessing. I'll go to Baskin Robbins. Uh, Dennis, don't do that. Just, 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 just hold on. We need your your support. Your faithful support of, of this ministry has made it possible that we do the things that we do, and we need your help. So I'm asking you right now: if you cannot give, if you cannot give through Cash App, go to Tithely and just just come back again. Cash App will be up real soon. I think Tiffany, you tried last week. This is going into our third week of a uh, second week of no Cash App, and believe me, we need all the financial support we can get right now. So please be patient with us. Uh, okay. Uh, Sister Stewart is going to come give us some direction on, on how we can and Melvin going to come, but the app. So those, but many people who are listening through YouTube don't have the app, but, but the grace covenant worship center app. Uh, if you can download that, it works. Um, Tiffany, I don't have your number. I can send it to you, but um, that works fine. I use it every week. So, and tidily. So, may y'all stand. Amen. Thank y'all, Pastor. Don't forget, we need something to remind us, and and that reminder is to you know it's to, it's to, just what it said. Remind us. Keep that word in front of you, Pastor Priest. A good sermon, a powerful sermon. And it's to remind us where we stand with God. So remember where you're at. Before you go, think about where you're going. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we're just so gracious today. Thank you, Lord, for waking us up. Thank you for allowing us to come out to the house of prayer, the house of the word of God. Thank you for the man of God that have placed the word in our heart this morning. Help us to walk in that word, talk in that word, sleep in that word. Thank you, Father. And Father God, thank you for, for those that, that, that have brought their tithes and offering to the storehouse today. And those that online that are sending ills. God, I thank you for opening up the windows of heaven and blessing their life, blessing their family. Thank you for healing their body. Thank you, Lord God. And God, we just praise you so much because we know that we're going to receive because we'll give us. And you said, if we give, it shall be given unto us. Good measure, press down, shake it together, running over. Shall me and runs to give into our bosom. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.